let us start draw frame today. The draw frame is a very, very simple machine. There is no complex mechanism within it. The construction of the machine is also very, very simple. Before we go into the construction part of the machine, let us first try to understand what is the purpose of drawing, what we require to draw a sliver. So, the first slide is all about sliver drawing. You can see a diagram where a very simple drawing zone is shown. This drawing zone consists of two pair of rollers, front roller and back rollers. Okay? And in between the rollers, we see lot of fibers shown by the crimpy lines. These fibers are going to be drawn by the two pair of rollers. So, to draw a sliver, what we need? At least there should be two pair of rollers. Without that drawing, which essentially means stretching, is not possible. Top and bottom rollers must be pressed against each other. Either there has to be an external pressure on them or they should be heavy enough to create pressure on the bottom rolls. Third important conditions for drawing is the surface speed of front pair must be faster than the back pair. So, we have shown here the speed of the front pair, the velocity is V 1, the velocity of the back pair of rollers is V 0. So, therefore, V 1 must be greater than V 0. The other condition is the distance between the nips, we also known as ratch must be greater than the fiber length. A sliver consists of large number of fibers, where the fibers are placed in a very random manner. The distance that we should maintain between the two rollers should be slightly more than the fiber length. This is required to avoid stretching of individual fibers instead of the sliver. We have remembered that we are actually stretching the sliver, not the fibers. So, if the two rollers are very close to each other, such that the distance between their nib is less than the fiber length, then the fiber is going to be stretched. And as a result, the fiber may break this is not what we want. What we want is that the sliver has to be stretched, so that the fibers slide over each other and thereby we can reduce the number of fibers in the cross section of the sliver. That is the purpose of drawing. And why do we draw a sliver? What happens? Look at the diagram now first on the left hand side. If the pressure which is there, which is acting on the top roller, they are transmitted to the nip of the pair of rollers. And the sliver which is running in between them also get pressed. And the pressure actually transmits horizontally along the sliver and acts as normal pressure between the fibers resulting in interfiber friction when the fibers are going to slide over each other. So, in the diagram what we see here is that the pressure is acting at the nip of the back pair of roller and also pressure is acting at the nip of the front pair of rollers. And 
<coughs> the pressure distribution is shown at the bottom by this normal distribution curve that is pressure is maximum at the nip and on both side of the nip the pressure gradually reduces and that is how the pressure will be distributed. Because of the pressure friction develops between the fibers and we call it friction force field. We also know that the bulk of the material gripped by the back pair of rollers is always larger than the bulk which is gripped by the front pair of rollers because of the drawing operation. Since we draw the material, the material gets stretched, the fiber gets stretched. That means number of fibers which are there at the nip of the back roller will be much more in number than the number of fibers gripped by the front roller. And hence we say the bulk of the material in the back roller or gripped by the back roller is much greater than those under the front rollers. The friction fields spread over a large area near the back zone than in the front zone. We will see later on that in the actual case that is in a draw frame, we do not have only a single zone drafting, we have two zones. We have a back zone and a front zone and the bulk of the material reduces as we go from back zone to the front zone. So, when the bulk is less in the front zone, the friction field also will spread less in the front zone because the bulk is less. So, the friction field is more in terms of its area or length in the back zone than in the front zone. Now, what is the consequence of friction field? Here in the diagram, we are showing you the spread of the friction field under the grip of back roller and the spread of the friction field under front roller. So, the thin rectangles that you see, they are representing the friction fields. Now, what we see here in the diagram that the friction field could be of three different types. One is non overlapping type friction field. The very first one that we see here as the two fields are separated from each other. The field under the back roller nib and the field under the front roller nib, there is a large gap between them. So, there is no interaction between the friction fields and this is called non overlapping type of friction field. The other one could be an overlapping friction field that is the next one. We will see that there is a overlapping zone between the friction field. So, this is mean the two friction fields are interacting with each other. This situation may also arise and the third one what we see that the friction fields of the back zone or under the back roller nib is much larger than the friction field under the front roller nib and there is no overlap between them. The third situation is the ideal situations. The friction field helps in guiding the shorter fibers to move at the back roller speed. We will see that why this is necessary and why do you want the short fibers to move at the back roller speed in the drafting zone till the short fibers are gripped by the front roller. That this part we will discuss later in more details. The next point is if the friction fields overlap, drafting disturbance may occur. So, you will have difficulties in drafting and fibers may move in erratic manner and that may lead to 
development or generation of mass irregularity into the drafted sliver. If the fields are too far apart from each other, that is the case in the first case of the diagram, then poor guidance of short fibers will be there and it will also result in uneven sliver. Therefore, neither do we want an overlapping friction field, which is possible when the rollers are brought very close to each other, nor do we want friction field to remain separated too much from each other. In that case, the guidance of the short fibers will be very, very limited or very, very poor that will also result in unevenness in the delivered product. So, the ideal condition is that the rear field extends far into the drafting zone and the front field is narrow and well defined as shown at the bottom of the diagram. This is the ideal situation of the friction field and the way the drafting zone has to be designed so that we get the friction field as shown in the diagram. That will give us minimum irregularity into the drafted products. Okay. From here, let us again define what the draft is in the case of uh, draw frame and how it can be calculated mathematically. In the machine, the input mass fed per unit time must be equal to the output mass delivered per unit time. This mass balance we have to maintain all the time. Whatever is fed, the same amount has to move out from the system. Otherwise, the material will accumulate within the system and that will lead to complete disturbance of the system. So, let us say M0 and M1 are the linear densities of slivers in direct system in the input and in the output. Direct system means it could be let us say kilotex or tex. And N is the number of sliver fed in the input. So, to keep the mass flow uniform that is to maintain mass balance, what we can write is that n m 0 v 0 must be equal to m 1 v 1. Why the n is coming? n because we are feeding n number of slivers in the input, but we are delivering only a single sliver from the machine. Therefore, n m 0 v 0 is basically equal to 1 into m 1 v 1. 1 we have not written. From there we can write that n m 0 by m 1 equal to v 1 by v 0 and this ratio v 1 by v 0 is z as z is the draft that is draft is the ratio of surface speed of front roller and back roller or it could be the ratio of the linear densities. From the definition of draft, now let us concentrate on what is ideal drafting. So, by the term drafting, we basically mean stretching of the sliver. Now, when we discuss about ideal drafting, we have to make certain assumptions to make the case an ideal one because the actual situation is quite different, but to understand the drafting process, we start with certain assumptions. In the diagram, what we see that there are large number of lines we have drawn. Each of those lines are representing a sliver, a fiber, not sliver, and all the lines combined together is representing a sliver. 
So, let us fibers in the slivers are of all same length which is equal to small l and they have the same fineness. So, this is the assumption number 1 that all the fibers are same length and same fineness. All the fibers are perfectly straight and parallel to the sliver axis. The way we have drawn the lines, we see all of them are parallel to each other and they are also oriented towards the axis of the sliver. The fibers are arranged in an echelon fashion throughout the product. That is, as one fiber end terminates, another appears to take its position. If we concentrate on one fiber, let us say look at this fiber, this fiber starts from here and ends there. The moment it ends, the next fiber starts just behind it. So, the trailing end of preceding fiber and the leading end of the follower they are next to each other. This is how the fibers are placed one after the other. This is we call it echelon way of arrangement of fibers. Now, let us now concentrate on the parallelogram A, B, C, D. This A, B, C represents a bunch of fibers in the cross section of the sliver. All parallel lines inside the parallelogram are representing fibers. So, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. The line B, C represents the number of fibers in the cross section of sliver. Okay. The distance between the leading end of fibers is represented by x. So, if we look at x carefully, x is the distance between the leading ends of two succeeding fibers. Okay. So, this is the simple representation of a sliver, an ideal case. So, if now we try to derive the relationship between x and l. So, what is x? S is the distance between the fiber ends, fiber leading ends. L is the length of fiber. So, we can write x equal to L by m, where m is the number of fibers in the cross section of the sliver. Okay? And therefore, L is equal to x into m. So, if the fibers length is L and there are m number of fibers in the cross section, then we can say the end to end distance between two fibers on an average is going to be L by m. m is representing number of fibers in the cross section of the sliver. This relationship is important for us draft as was discussed earlier that it could be the ratio of combined input of sliver linear density and output sliver linear density. So, it could be n into h in and divided by h out in the case of direct system. In the case of indirect system, draft is going to be output sliver linear density divided by combined input sliver linear density that is h out divided by 1 upon n h n. So, these are very simple way of uh, determining the actual draft from the linear density of the slivers that we feed and that we get from the machine. Now, geometrical analysis of fiber movement. So, here is a diagram where the drafting zone consisting of two rollers is shown and we have drawn vertical lines running through the nape of these rollers and we have drawn the construction of a sliver, the ideal sliver shown by the parallelogram A, B, C, D as we have seen earlier. And 
carefully see the fiber 1 which is CD, fiber 2 represented by the blue line. The length of the fiber is small l and the nip to nip distance between the roller is also equal to small n or you can say slightly less than small l. Practically they are almost equal to fiber length. So, now in a situation like this focus on fibers 1 and fiber 2 that is fiber 1 represented by the black form line C D and fiber 2 represented by the blue line. Now, let the fibers represented by the parallelogram A B C D they are approaching the drafting zone. So, all the fibers gripped by the back pad of rollers represented by the line B C are moving as of now at the speed of V 0 because they are all nipped by the back pair of rollers. So, all the fibers in the parallelogram A B C D at this instant they are all moving at the speed of V 0. Now, the, now the moment the N T reaches the nip line, the front nip line, it will start moving at the speed of V 1. How long it will move at the speed of V 1? That is what we are trying to find out. And during this duration of time where fiber 2 will be. So, as of now or at this instant the distance between the leading ends of fiber 1 and fiber 2 is exactly x. Okay. Now, we go to the next slide time taken by fiber 2 to reach the front roller nip will be how much fiber 2 is moving at the speed of V 0 and it has to cover a distance x to reach the front roller nib. So, the time it will take to reach the front roller nib that that time is t which is x by v 0. During this time t fiber C d will move a distance. How much distance it will move? It was already gripped by the front roller and therefore, it will continue to move at the front roller speed for a duration of time small t and therefore, in this time it will move a distance v 1 t. So, the distance between their leading ends now becomes how much we can write from this equation. The distance between the leading ends after drafting is represented by the parallelogram C D E F and distance between two consecutive fibers in the parallelogram C D E F is being shown by small y. So, what will be small y? Small y is going to be V 1 t which will be V 1 into the value of t if we substitute this x by V 0. So, we can write it as x into v 1 by v 0 and v 1 by v 0 is the draft z. So, we can write y is going to be x z. So, the relationship between them is this that the distance between the two succeeding fibers after drafting is going to be z times the distance before drafting. And if the distance between the leading ends before drafting is x, the distance between the same two fibers leading ends after drafting is going to be z x. So, separation between them is going to be z into x all right. Now, in this diagram if B c represents 
the number of fibers held by the back roller nip and d f represents the number of fibers held by the front roller nip. So, d f is going to be this is going to be f and this is e. So, d f is from here to there and b c is going to be from b to c these two lines. So, each of them representing the number of fibers grid by back roller and by the front roller. So, how much is m 1 and how much is m 2? We are going to write the equations. m 1 as we have seen earlier is going to be l by x, where l is the length of fiber and x is the distance between the ends of the fibers. And what is going to be m 2? m 2 is going to be l by y, because now the distance between them after drafting has become y. Prior to drafting the distance between them was x, after drafting it has become y. So, m 2 is going to be small l by y and therefore, the y we have already seen is equal to x z. So, it will be l by x z and now what is l by x? l by x is going to be m 1 in the previous equation. Therefore, m 2 is going to be m 1 by z. So, m 2 is the number of fibers in the cross section of the drafted product and m 1 is the number of fibers in the cross section of the fed material as a feed sliver in this case. So, what we can write therefore, the number of fibers in the sliver cross section after drafting is going to be 1 upon z times of what it was before drafting. Therefore, let us say our draft is 10 and we have 1000 fibers in the cross section in the feed material. So, in the output material how many fibers we will get in this cross section? It will be 1000 divided by 10, for 10 is the draft. So, we will have 100 fibers on an average in the cross section of the delivered product. So, this is how the number of fibers in the cross section of input and output are related to each other. We will now try to find out what is the average separation between the fibers. The relative movement between any two consecutive fibers after drafting is going to be z x as we have already seen. So, time taken now let us say we are comparing between C D and A B. Time taken by the last fiber A B to reach the front roller nip will be L by V 0. During this time, the first fiber C D will move a distance how much is going to be V 1 into L by V 0. That is, it will be L into V 1 by V 0 that is going to be L into z. Therefore, the minimum separation between the fibers is 0 and the maximum separation between the fiber first fiber and the last fiber is going to be L z minus L and therefore, if we take L common is going to be L within bracket z minus 1 and therefore, the average is going to be the sum of these two divided by 2. So, 0 plus L into z minus 1 by 2, which is going to be L into z minus 1 by 2. So, minimum separation is 0 between two consecutive fibers and maximum separation could be L into z minus L, which is L into z minus 1. So, therefore, the average separation could be L into z minus 1 by 2. So, this is how the fibers separation will take place in a cross section 
the minimum separation could be 0 and the maximum separation could be L into z minus 1 and therefore, the average is the average of these two. Fast and slow moving fibers within the drafting zone. We want to represent the it is a geometrical representations of fast and slow moving fibers within drafting zone. So, here is a diagram. This diagram first we have to understand the diagram very carefully. And there are two lines drawn C C dash representing the back nip and E E dash line representing the front nip. So, the back nip the fibers are moving at the speed of v 0 and the fibers held by the front nip they are moving at the speed of v 1. Now, O B represents the number of fibers gripped by the back roller nip. So, m 1 extends from 0 to B. Similarly, D F D 2 F this represent the number of fibers held by the front roller nib. So, D F is equal to M 2 and O B is equal to M 1. Now, there is another line we have drawn that the green line that you see here from B to D. B D represents change in number of fibers moving at back roller speed. So, at the back roller all M 1 fibers are moving at the speed of back roller, but as we move through the drafting zone from back to the front roller nip what we find the number of fibers moving at the back roller speed will gradually reduce their numbers. So, by the time we come to the front roller nip number of fibers moving at the back roller speed will be almost 0. Therefore, the line B to D represents change in number of fibers moving at the back roller speed within the drafting zone. Similarly, the line O F we change the number of fibers moving at the front roller speed is not back roller this will be front roller speed. So, O F O F will represent the change in number of fibers moving at the front roller speed, because at the point O there is no fiber moving at the speed of front roller. As we move from O towards the front roller name that is move along the line D what we will find we find more and more fibers moving at the speed of front roller and hence O F represents a change in number of fibers moving at front roller speed V 1. Let us draw a line vertically which is M M dash within the drafting zone. This line cuts other lines at the point P Q R L K. Let us look at these points P Q R L and K. Now, what is K R from point K to R? K R will represent number of fibers in the given section moving at speed V 0. Now, let us go to P R. What is P R? P R is equal to M 1 or it is basically P K minus K R or M 1. So, P K is equal to M 1 because M 1 is the total number of fibers gripped by the back pair of loaders. So, it is M 1 and K R is the number of fibers moving in that section at the speed of back rollers. So, P R is equal to m 1 minus k r that is the difference between number of fibers held by back rollers 
and number of fibers moving at the speed v1. Another important part is LK. How much is LK? LK is, is going to be equal to QR. Uh, this is the number of fibers in the given section moving at the speed of V1. And LK, the length of the line LK represents the number of fibers moving at that particular section. That is, the section is mm dash at the speed of front roller. So, one this geometry is clear. Now, we go to write these things. Consider the similar triangles B, B dash D and B, P, R. What is B, B dash D? So, B, B dash D and B, P, R, B, P, R and B, B dash D. Let us focus on these two triangles. They are actually similar triangles. So, being similar triangles, we can write that B dash D by P R is going to be B B dash by B P. This can be written. And what is B dash D? B dash D is equal to M 1. So, we can write M 1 by P R is equal to B B dash by B P. Okay, this is the first equation that we can write looking at the geometry of the fibers running in the drafting zone. Next, consider similar triangles O F D and O L K. So, we will consider let us look at what is what is O F D. So, O is here O F D and O L K. Look at this. These two triangles are also similar. So, when they are similar, therefore, we can write that is D F by K L will be O D by O K. Okay. D F by K L equal to O D by O K. So, O D and B B dash are same. So, O D is replaced by B B dash and O K and B P are also same. So, O K has been replaced by B P. So, we can write d f by k l is equal to b b dash by b p. All right. From here, now what is d f? d f is equal to m 2 and m 2 is the number of fibers in the cross section of the sliver under the front roller nib. So, d f is replaced by m 2. So, m 2 by k l equal to b b dash by b p. So, now compare these two equations, equation 1.5 and equation 1.6. What we see that in both the equations, the right hand side is exactly same B B dash by B P in both the cases. And therefore, if we compare these two equations, combine them, we can write M 1 by P R equal to M 2 by K L. And from there, we can write m 1 by m 2 is going to be p r by k l. And therefore, p r by k l is going to be p r by q r, which is nothing but z that is the draft. So, q r we can write is p r by z and p r is what is p r? p r equal to m 1 minus k r as we have seen it earlier. So, it will be m 1 minus k r by z. This is what is going to be k r. Therefore, the change in the number of fibers moving at front roller speed depends upon the draft. So, how many fibers are moving at the front roller speed that is basically represented by the triangle O F D. This triangle is representing number of fibers moving at the front loader speed within the drafting zone. So, if we look at this, then we see that the these fibers, their number is a function of 
the draft z. However, the number of change in number of fibers moving at the feed roller speed, it does not depend upon the draft. This is what is the conclusion from this particular you know, analysis that the fibers moving at the front roller speed within the drafting zone will change as the draft is being changed. So, if I increase the draft, this line will move, this blue line, if I draw for another draft, this is going to come down, f is going to move down and therefore, d f is going to be shorter if I increase the draft and hence the number of fibers which are moving within the drafting zone at front loader speed is a function of draft. Whereas, if the draft is changed, the profile B D is not going to change. The profile that represents the change in number of fibers moving at the back roller speed that is not going to change. That figure is not going to change that will still remain B D whatever is the draft. So, this is and the black line B F represents what? It is the total number of fibers within the drafting zone and this total number of fiber means it is some total of fibers moving at back roller speed as well as moving at front roller speed. That is what is represented by the black line B f. So, this back line is basically the mass profile of fibers in the drafting zone, irrespective of whether they are moving at the back roller speed or at the front roller speed. So, the profile will look like this as shown in this particular diagram that the fibers if they are of same length and the speed changes uniformly in the region close to the front roller, the mass profile will also change in a very linear manner. So, you see here the mass profile from here to there is changing and this change is almost linear provided the fibers are of same length and the all the fibers change their pitch only when they arrive at the front roller nip. The profile will be similar to the profile of fiber numbers changing within the drafting zone. This is the profile that we will get. So, suppose from a drafting zone, if we stop the machine and remove the sliver from the drafting zone and mark them by two lines and then we cut cross sections of the sliver and then take the weight of those masses and then we plot it on a graph paper. We will see that the mass closer to the back roller nip is very large and the mass closer to the front roller nip is minimum and there will be linear reduction in mass from back nip to the front nip. Okay? So, with this let us stop today. Thank you.